What is literature but something that stands the test of time and loads of people either love it or hate it? <laughs> Morgan's style of reading. I'm absolutely thrilled to accommodate that. I can keep my mind open to different forms of literature. I'm piecemealing this all together. There is no one helping me do this. Hi you guys, welcome back. Thank you for being here with me. It has been an age since I've talked about literature in depth and so that's what I wanted to do today and to see what it is that you guys are doing for literature and how you separate it out or if you do with the rest of the realm that is English language arts. So we break it down in our house um, four ways and then there are a few other subcategories but our biggest ones are and I've got my list because I don't want to forget is poetry uh, books we jointly read so Morgan will read one page and I'll read the other M books Morgan reads and then books I read aloud that we follow up with Morgan filling out a literature guide. So before I start, if you don't know me and you haven't been here before, thank you. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Jill and I'm the homeschool mom to a nine-year-old girl in the fourth grade. And this is our first year homeschooling. This is our first everything. So um, I'm kind of impressed <laughs> that the literature has stuck, that the way I, I envisioned that we would do it has gelled. It's really worked quite well. And I think that this is a long-term venture for Morgan and I. So let's get right into it. I want to show you the book logs and first, and that is because these have ended up being very important to us. These book logs, let's see, I've got mine. We both keep one. And so I had a goal last year of reading 100 books in a year, and it didn't matter what the books were. It, it ran the gamut of thrillers, nonfiction, fiction. I mean, I read stuff that I didn't think I would ever read. I've never read a rom-com before, and I did. So it wasn't real classics heavy nor did I intend it to be. But what I wanted was for Morgan to see me reading. And it was important for me to see, for her to see me reading a book rather than on my phone, because we always kind of, we have Kindle on our phone and kids see us looking at the screen, but they don't necessarily know what we're doing. And I wanted her to see that it's a book that I'm reading. So I ended up doing a lot of hard copy books that I hadn't envisioned because Audible or Kindle is a lot easier, especially for, we live, really far out in the middle of nowhere. It takes forever for a book to get here. So that was a challenge for me. And I think that that drove Morgan. So when I got my reading log and she saw it and started flipping through it and seeing that, uh, seeing what, actually this is, this is hers. It's, they kind of look the same. Seeing what I was writing in mine, Morgan wanted one. So she started at the beginning of the school year and she is writing all of the books that she has read, has read, to, has been read to her, or that she has listened to. And so for school purposes, for the state, I don't actually write a list of the books that she listens to. I don't know that they care about them, nor are they important for me to put on the on that list. But what is important is for her to see it and for me to see it because it just makes me really proud. I like to be able to tell her how proud I am that she's reading so much. And so for us, the Audible books count um, greatly. And then what I do is, or she can, she'll print out a little piece of the book and stick it to the page and then write her review. And it'll be everything that she's read or has read to her. And that's done wonders. So I, if you haven't tried a reading log and you think that that's something that might work or to encourage children to read more, um, I know it worked for me and I know it worked for Morgan, maybe it will work for you. The books that she started reading on her own, I was going to have a book that Morgan read on her own concurrently with a book that I was reading to her and we would just track and whatever she was done, she'd pick up another and, and they would just sort of kind of go along at the same tempo or not necessarily the same tempo, but concurrently. I find that that sort of stalled our joint reading and I'm not really concerned about it, but I'm going to review what I think about joint reading and if I need to do more of it, Vice read to her. And if you have any opinions on that, I'd love to hear what they are too or how you separate it out. So Morgan started off with Pippi Longstocking and she loved it. She there's no two, three, and four star reads for her. There's a one, one star and a five star. <laughs> and then she went on to reading Exit 13. 
she kind of likes the creepy books and some graphic novels and those count for me and I have a graphic novel video if you're interested in that I have changed my opinion of the graphic novel. I think Audible and the graphic novel are two gateway drugs to getting a child to read more, and so I do not complain. In fact, the graphic novel era for Morgan lasted uh, not a very long time, about two months, maybe even less. And from there, the graphic novel of 39 Clues, and then another graphic novel, Be Prepared. As Morgan got thicker graphic novels and sat and read and realized that she could sit for longer periods of time and that she was going through these graphic novels really fast, she started asking for the, instead of the graphic novel, the book, the short chapter books. And so then she started reading one to 200 page books. And this is the Mary Downing Hahn, a creepy one, Doll in the Garden. She likes some creepy ones. It's kind of a cool sort of mystery. From there, she leapt in January to thicker books, much thicker books. And this is James Ponty's Dead City. This is her second read. I read it to her first, I think a year ago. And she read it alone uh, this January. And then immediately has just launched into much thicker books. This one is Devouring Wolf by Natalie Parker. And another thing that she likes me to do for her is tab reading pages. And so I, let's see, she's a, She's a week into this and she's almost done. And so I'm really impressed with her. She just really likes to read now. She's always liked to read, but it's just been um, exhausting for her because she's like me. She grew up as a slower, slower reader. And that can be exhausting at times where you read and you read a lot, but you haven't gone really far. And so the graph, those graphic novels and Audible has helped her understand that you can keep hearing and getting through books without visually reading them initially. And that's been very important. Um, that's been a very important learning experience for me as well. So what I do is Morgan likes to read 20-ish pages a day and she really likes to see that tab. And so at the beginning of the week, she dog ears wherever she left off. And then at the beginning of the week, I do another set of, of pages, 20, 20, 20, 20. And so she'll be finished with this book by um, next Friday, I think. Five more days, one, two, three, six more days. So I don't have, Morgan talks to me about these books. I don't have her do anything formal. She'll read a few chapters and I'll ask what's going on, what's happening, how, you know, why is, you know, what's going on with the devouring wolf and why, why is it taking away this girl's powers and all that stuff. And so she likes, that's our narration. She likes to talk about the book. From there, uh, let's see, what should I cover next? Let's cover the literature that I've read to her. So I had started with Black Beauty, the original, and in my first video I had explained how difficult it is to get original readings. If I'm going to, I'm okay with doing the like shorter versions, but if I'm going to read literature to Morgan aloud, I, w I want the original, I want the unabridged version. And so I found Black Beauty and I thought that we would read this together, but after the first chapter, I realized some of it's older English and it was a little tricky, so this turned into a read aloud to her. And we liked it. Hobbit is another one. We just loved it. Morgan, um, we, we actually did a literature guide for this one and I can't find it. So I probably need to look, for, I'm usually organized guys. Like mostly I'm organized. Uh, and so we did a we read through this and we did a literature guide to this. And I've had to make my, make my own literature guides because a lot of the books as an eclectic mom who doesn't follow a program, I can't always find somebody else having done one for me. Um, I looked on Etsy and then realized, well, maybe I can make these myself. And so each, what I do is each time I read to Morgan at night and I'll read a, a chapter, two chapters, whatever. And then in the morning, cause I'm a really early bird, in the morning what I do is I create the literature guide. So before we start the book, I've already done the cover because I think a fun cover with Morgan's name and the date that she started the book is one, it's really good for when I hand in the portfolio to North Dakota. And two, it encourages her, it makes it her own and she feels like she owns this literature guide and this is for her to write in only for her. And in the morning, I will go through the chapters that we just read together and I will develop the literature guide and it goes chapter by chapter. And this one, I think I just did one page per. Yeah, so I, I kept it at one page of a literature study or comprehension 
purr. And so it's got, I do a, I do a, a mix of answer a question, I do two part questions, I do true and false, and multiple choice. So she finished that literature guide and enjoyed it. The thing about literature guides though that I find is, and why we didn't do one for Little Women or Dracula, is this slows down our reading. So I can read five pages, or excuse me, five chapters a night to Morgan, but that is exhausting for her to do five chapters of a literature guide the next day. And so I end up with our literature, I end up reading fewer chapters so that she's not exhausted by the literature guide the next morning. Now, that's why I didn't do, for the next two books that I read to her, I read Little Women to her and uh, Louisa May Alcott's Little Women and Bram Stoker, Unabridged. We liked these so much and I read them so fast to her that I felt like if I did a literature guide, it would just slow down the experience and nearly ruin it because we really liked these books. So that's what we did there. And then following, Let's see. Oh, I had a Vander, I talked to, I mentioned this before that I had the Vanderbeekers study guide that I fil, uh, that I created and the key to it. And one of you ladies reached out and asked if you could have a look at this. And so if you are interested in it, any of these literature guides, um, let me know. I, I'm happy to provide them to you on PDF. And, in, and if you would beta test it for me or maybe correct anything that I've screwed up, that, and let me know, that would be really helpful for me as well. So if you want any of these literature guides, um, if you go on my, I have a website for my farmstead and it's um, twistedcarrotfarm.org. Don't go to .com because that's a lady in Virginia. If you go to twistedcarrotfarm.org and just go to the contact site and email me, then that just goes to my personal email and then I can send it to you on PDF. So there's that. Uh, let's see, we then, we did The Hobbit and we did that one. So we're in the middle, oh, then I read this one and I didn't feel like, this isn't literature, but it was a book that I really wanted to read aloud to Morgan. So we didn't do a literature guide. It's a good read though and I and we enjoyed it. These are really, <laughs> these are not nice girls though. These sisters kind of do some mean stuff to each other. Um, there's a reason why that happens and there's a reason why they recover from it. And there's some scary stuff in there that they have to go through. So we read it and I enjoyed reading it with her, but we didn't do, a literature guide. What we are doing a literature guide to now is premeditated myrtle that Morgan had um, selected off of our, we have a shelf with um, some of our books, some of the books that she has, we wrapped in newspaper and then once we're done with one, we do another reveal of which, you know, we pick one, we don't know which one it is and she unwraps it and that's the next book that we'll do. So this book is going really slow because we have a literature guide to it. I also didn't expect this book to uh, reach the level of, of what I think of as literature. This is right up there with Agatha Christie. And this is kind of a young Sherlock Holmes girl too. This is a really good book. There's a lot of complicated words in it. And so what I did for her literature guide, did I, do I have it? Um, I have a vocab list because there's some words in there that I think are interesting and oh, somebody should look up and, and see what they are. So the premeditated myrtle, I have the literature guide for that. And so there's things like um, what is eccentric? What's the word posthumously mean? Or um, precocious or confidant? So she can look those up or talk to me about what they might mean based off of uh, the context of the page or what's written on the page, and then she fills it out. So that's, it's going really well. It's just slowing down our reading. So I don't know how I feel about that. But other literature guides I have is for warriors. This is, um, I don't know, I guess it wouldn't be ca classified as literature. It's not old enough to be yet, I guess. What is literature? But something that stands the test of time and loads of people either love it or hate it. <laughs> But this book, I know a ton of kids love Warriors by um, Aaron Hunter. Into the Wild is the first one. And I used this when I was a para last year in our school. I used this on the fourth grade little reading groups that I had. And they, they loved this book and they really liked the literature guide. So I'm going to keep that. And then when we get to Warriors, then Morgan can use it. I've got one that I pre-made for Golden Compass. 
and then we have one for Pippi Longstocking. But here's the problem with pre-made ones, and this is what I've this is one of the things that I've learned this year is I don't know that we're going to get to Golden Compass this year, and I I am writing according to Morgan's level and higher. And so this can just wait. It'll sit on the shelf and wait when we get to Golden Compass, but I wish that I had done now one that we'd already read <laughs> so that I don't have to do another this year. So lesson learned. That's why now I don't do the literature guides until we have read we've started the book and we're reading the chapters. It's a you got to keep up on it though. If I do it that way I really have to oh sorry I shook the camera. Um, if I do it that way I really have to keep up on the literature guide. So, let's see. What do we have? Um there are books for that we jointly read. Let's see what we have. Okay, so I seem I feel like I've got fewer books that we read together. Um, oh, we've only read three, uh, but I buy when I do read alouds with Morgan or with Morgan, where she reads one page and I read the other, I buy two copies so that she can sit and read her own book and I can sit and read mine. And it just, I find it that works really well that way. So we loved Little House on the Prairie and that was just a great read for her. And I think that came with a literature guide too. The first book though was Little House in the Big Woods. So that's the first of her books and we did that one. We had two kinds. I had the original. This is an old one from the 70s. This was my book growing up. And then I got Morgan the um, the one in color that is, um, it's just sweet. It's the same book. It's just, it's in color with the, the images which was fun for her. And then we jointly read Bliss. She had started reading this one herself and got a little bogged down initially. And so I offered to read it with her. And so we jointly, we jointly read this one. Now another two that I had planned on reading and I'm not sure that we will get to this year is otherwise known as Sheila the Great by Judy Bloom. So I have two copies here. And I don't know if Morgan's gonna like this book now with the genre that she is enjoying. I think if I try to do another jointly read book with her and I, it'll probably be Madeline Langle's A Wrinkle in Time. This is more Morgan's style of reading and I'm happy to accommodate that. I'm absolutely thrilled to accommodate that. I can't tell you how many books and I was a I was not the best reader. I was a slower reader. Uh, and it was really hard when I was given a book that I had to read and I didn't enjoy it. It just made it doubly difficult for a kid who's already struggling to read. And so I, by accommodating Morgan's reading preferences, I can give her still literature or good books that she can read, but also ones that she wants to read. And I think that that is really, really important for me to do for her. And then this is one we might actually do together. Hattie Big Sky by Kirby Larson. I read this as an adult and really enjoyed it. And since we live on the prairie, that's also why Little House on the Prairie, Laura Ingalls Wilder is so important to us. We live here on the prairie. And this takes place in Montana because it's Big Sky. It's also very similar to where we live. And Morgan likes the idea of pioneer girls. And so that's something that may be on our list. So. Let's see, those are the, that's the three ways we read books and with the literature guides. Then one thing that sort of is going to morph, I think, and grow is poetry. So we had started memorizing poetry and we had used IEW's poetry memorization book. We have quickly gone straight off of that into our own world. Uh, Morgan has found poems that she prefers and that she enjoys and she keeps them and wants to memorize them. So Shel Silverstein is one of them that wasn't in that book and she's since ventured out into Vincent Saint Mal Edna Vincent St. Millay um, and what else? Robert Frost. We did one but Outer Space by Robert Frost when we were doing the space study. There's another one in here. The Arrow and the Song by Hedward, excuse me, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Keep a Poem in Your Pocket by Beatrice Schenck de Renier. And now she's chosen Sea Joy by Jacqueline Bouvier. And the next one will be a poem by Walt Whitman. I cannot remember which one it was but I read it to her and she said she really liked that one. And so she's beginning to take ownership of her reading. And I am totally on board with that. 
I want her to take on the responsibility and the ownership of, of all of her learning experience. I feel like the older she gets, m the more my job, the less my job is to teach, and the more my job is to assist her learning and to teach her a love of learning. If she knows how to learn and she loves to learn, the sky's the limit. And so I feel like more than any other subject that is happening in literature and I will foster that as much as I can. So with poetry, Morgan has started writing her own poetry and then from there I think what we will do is, because I've started reading Shakespeare's sonnets and I know some people start reading Shakespeare early. I'm not, I'm not sure that I'd be interested in doing it in the fourth grade. I feel like it's something that we may want to begin in the fifth grade doing Shakespeare and particularly going to see his plays, picking a play, reading the play, listening to the play, watching one or two theater productions online from beginning to end, and then ultimately taking Morgan to the Shakespeare play. There's a lot of bad Shakespeare productions out there, <laughs> and I'm really concerned about taking Morgan to a Shakespeare in the park that is a disaster. And I don't want to ruin her initial experience of the great playwright. I, I don't want to ruin that at all for her. So I'm going to be pretty picky in that regard. And while I kind of pick and choose and I'm not in a hurry to start Morgan on Shakespeare, I am prepping to do that. And so I am reading the sonnets and then I will go through and read all of, the Shakes all of Shakespeare's poems. Now, I believe it's important for me to do that because as an eclectic school mom or an eclectic homeschool mom, I'm piecemealing this all together. There is no one helping me do this. And I believe that if I'm going to do it, I need to do it well, I need to do it thoroughly, and I need to make sure I pick and choose things that will work for her, and that may not necessarily be my genre. And there may be things that neither of us has read that it would be good for her. So I wanna keep my aperture wide and open, and keep my mind open to uh, different forms of literature according to how Morgan is going to learn and take that on. Now, with that, I think starting plays early is a great idea. And so next month, I am taking Morgan to her first play. And if you haven't done that to a first adult play, not for children. If you haven't done that before, uh, I suggest doing a matinee, starting with a matinee. And Sundays are usually a really great time to go in the afternoon where the tickets are cheaper for kids too. And so I plan on making a huge production of it, excuse the pun, <laughs> but I plan on getting dressed up with Morgan, making a big deal out of it, we will go and have a wonderful lunch before we go to the play. Then we will go to the play. Then after the play, we will go to a cafe and we will sit and talk about the play and discuss the things that we liked and didn't like about it and discuss the things we did understand or don't want to see again or want to see more of. And that is, this will be Morgan's beginning into living, breathing poetry, living, breathing theater production and playwrights. And I think that's something that will be worthwhile for us. Let's see, what else? I think that's kind of it. <laughs> I don't know how else other eclectic moms do it. I, I don't know that there's a right way or a wrong way. There's just our way and it works for us. So um, I hope this has helped you or generated um, thoughts. I don't particularly encourage you to read any book that we're reading. One wor might work for you or one might not. But the sky is really the limit, as I had mentioned. You just don't know what you don't know, right? And so I plan on continuing to give Morgan as much or as many varying types of books as I possibly can because I would love to foster, continue to foster a love of reading for her. I hope you've enjoyed watching, and if you have comments, please feel free to send them to me. I love interacting with you guys, and I appreciate so much all of your support and your kindness. So from my house to yours, whoever you are, wherever you are, have a wonderful homeschool week. See ya.